thought our guys battled and fought, and a lot of young players came through that, uh, you know, just really, really proud of. Hand it off to Emmett. Nice game that time, a 24-yard for Emmett Johnson. Snap down, kick sailing towards the uprights, and the kick is good. He got it in there. That's a career long for Tristan Alvado. He's made three of his last four. Uh, I just, I wasn't even, I didn't even see it happen. I was playing man, and I could just hear the crowd, and I knew it was over, so it was pretty great. As Coach Osborne came in and said, if you guys can keep running the Billy G option, you have to run the Billy G pass. And Malachi ran by everybody, ran the Billy G option pass, uh, hit it for a touchdown. As they start businesses and as they have families, tough things are going to happen. And I don't want them to be like the people who are victims. I want them to say, this happened to me. I'm going to use it for good. I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to move forward. Hope you enjoyed our high V sounds of the game. Huskers a 17-9 winner over the Northwestern Wildcats. Congratulations. A really solid effort by your defense in this game. A lot of tackles for losses, a lot of hitting the quarterback. It was a really solid effort for your team. Yeah, you know, I, I told the guys, I think it's one of the you know, best wins I've been a part of. It might, might not be the best performance. But in terms of the guys playing together as a team, special teams making an impact, uh, hitting a big play on offense, uh, and then certainly the defense, um, take away a couple of big plays that they let up, I thought it was probably the, you know, the most dominant I've seen them play this year. Out, no touchdowns. That's hard to do in a Big Ten game. Keep somebody out of the end zone. Yeah, you know, I, what, what I was proud of is they hit two runs that, you know, a team that doesn't have the same mindset that maybe our guys do. Uh, Omar Brown wouldn't, maybe wouldn't turn and run the guy down. Maybe Malcolm wouldn't run the guy down. But both of those men, um, they they ran they ran the they ran the offensive player down, got the ball down, and we held him to a field goal. And that that to me is the difference between winning and losing. A lot of good stuff to get to in the next half hour. We'll come back and check out the first half action of the Huskers' victory over Northwestern. That's coming up next. Let's check out this week's Big Mac sack from McDonald. Off the court, Oscar 47. Sullivan gets the chest high snap. Stepping up, being pressured, gets hit and goes down. Huskers get their first sack of the game. Northwestern has given up the most sacks of any team in a conference. The Oscars get one there from Nash. That is your Big Mac sack of the game. Henrich collapsing the pocket from the interior. Nash getting off the ball. How about, how about the little snap from the edge rush? Made him step up. Nash is going to get the sack, but making him step up was the key, I think, for that whole play by the Huskers. I think it was Jamari Butler that made him step up. With that Big Mac sack, Big Mac sandwiches are buy one, get one free the day after the game. Only at McDonald's. We welcome you back to the Husker Football Show presented by BMO. Let's get into the first half action. Huskers match up on a beautiful Saturday. Huskers get the ball first and this opening throw from Heinrich is, I know, a pass that he would probably like to, to get back. Yeah, you know, he came out to be aggressive. Uh, you know, you see uh, Borkatcher's running sketch down the sidelines. Fedoni's about to come underneath, so you think it's going to be a touchdown. Um, ball just got a little bit, you know, behind him. Um, you know, the four of our first six plays were not our best plays. But a sack right out of way. First of eight sacks on the day. Your defense makes that turnover turn into nothing. Yeah, great job by the defensive staff. You know, they put five D linemen on the field, try to create five one-on-ones, and a lot of guys won. So you get the football back, not able to, to move it. The, the field position was rough for you for a good chunk of the game. Yeah, we've had more uh, we've had more drive start inside the one year line this year than I think I've had in ten years. So um, it, it's an opportunity, but we just didn't capitalize on it. So even though they started another drive in plus territory, they're not able to do anything with it. And you get the football back. So your defense is doing a really nice job here at this part of the game. Then this will be disappointing as the ball comes out. You do get it back, but I know you don't like seeing the ball come out. Yeah, no, unacceptable. The, 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 the ball on the ground, as many times as it was, is just absolutely not uh, what it can be. This interception, not what it can be. Great play by Ethan Piper. Runs it down, gets it down, gives our defense a chance. And um, to me, to me, this was the game. You know, this was, uh, this was their opportunity to take a lead, get a big lead up on us. And our defense um, went out there and held him to three points through two, through, two, through two turnovers. Nash, two and a half sacks in the game, one of them coming right there. They make that long kick to go up 3 nothing. You have a nice kickoff return here, sets you up a little bit shorter field, and you're able to move it down there and get some points on this drive. Yeah, excellent. There was an excellent job here. Uh, you know, had a nice run by Emmett Johnson. Uh, Heinrich does a good job extending a third down. Um, and then Tristan goes out, you know, the young guy goes out there and, and makes a big kick into the wind. Um, you know, he's a guy that hit the goalpost in the pregame, <laughs> and he makes that hit. Career long kick for Tristan there from 47 yards out. So the game tied at three. Your defense gets a three and out. Uh, Ty bats a ball down there to end that possession. You get the football back. And uh, here, here, Anthony Grant held on to the ball much better today in his carries. Yeah, had, had a good week and uh, carried over to the game. So uh, hopefully we can continue to 
up his workload. I thought Emmett played well. Josh did some good things. So, you know, I, I like our backs right now. Nice third down conversion run by Heinrich there, but you're not able to move it any further here. Northwestern played hard on their defense, too. They fought you all day long. Yeah, we, you know, we, we knew the type of team that they are, competitive team that they are, that was going to be like this. Um, you know, what was good was starting to get the field position turned in the right direction. And this is the play I talked about, Omar Brown, you know, uh, running it down, uh, getting the ball down so that we can, you know, continue to play defense. So that saves what could have been a touchdown. They end up getting a field goal on this drive, but maybe a four-point save there by Omar chasing down Tyus, the running back on the bust up the field. So now Cats back in front, 6-3. to three. Emma Johnson's going to start the next drive. I thought he played well, 73 yards on the ground. Yeah, Emma's, him. Get, Emma's getting more and more comfortable, you know. Um, uh, this is an excellent run, physical run. Uh, gets us the first down. You know, anytime we can get the option game going, uh, this is a great job by Heinrich, uh, uh, getting the ball on the perimeter and um, finishing with the zone replay to get in the end zone. This was a 10-play, 77-yard drive, over five minutes off the clock, and Harburg's touchdown gives you the first lead of the game at 10 to six. Nice uh, physical run here. He even said after the game he got hit as hard as he had been all year by this cat defense. Yeah, I, I thought number zero for them, and forgive me for not remembering his name right now, I think it's Azima. It is. I, I thought he played fantastic. I mean, he was a physical guy running the ball, and we have to continue to get Heinrich to run through contact, not just accept contact. And you get a pick here to end the half, Tommy Hill with his interception here. So you have to go to the locker room with a 10-6 lead over Northwestern. Some fun highlights in the second half to look at as well. We'll do that next. Welcome back to the Husker Football Show presented by BMO. So Nebraska with a 10-6 lead at half. Northwestern gets the football to start the second half. And this is, a, this, this is you don't want them to get any momentum. And you get a great play coming up here from Isaac Gifford. This was, you know, this was another one of those plays that, you know, was a game-defining play. All-out blitz. Um, you know, the guy who has the back runs right by him. And Giff, you know, beats two blockers and goes ahead and makes the play. Here again, the ball gets on the on the ground, but you were able to pick this back up and not able to get anything moving here at this point. In fact, the offense a little sleepy in the third quarter of this game. Couldn't get kind of into a rhythm. Now the defense back out there for you. Well, what I like watching about the defense is, you know, multiple guys making plays, Makai Bear there. This is a ball we have to pick off, you know. Uh, this is another game we lost a turnover battle 2-1. to one. Um, Obviously, it didn't cost us the game, but we had many opportunities to pick balls off, that being one of them. They had a personal foul that backs this drive up, and so then you keep pressure on them. They bring in their more run mobile quarterback. They try a long kick. It comes up short even with the wind at the back, so you skirt any points, still have the 10-6 lead at this point. Yeah, really proud of the guys on defense. You know, We knew we were going to get some trick plays. We knew this was a team that had faked some punts, um, and they, they kept those plays in front of them. And Here you can see on offense, there's some plays there. Uh, we, we know we can make them. We're, we're going to have to start to make those plays as we move forward. Ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. Northwestern gets the football back. They, uh, they're not able to do much. You hold them, hold them here on defense as we get into the fourth quarter of this game. Yeah, you know, Northwestern's a fourth quarter team. Came back down 31-10 against Minnesota. Got into the drop back game. Um, really, really, really nice job by our guys on defense of just c continuing to secure uh, the passing game. Uh, backed up again. Emmett comes out with a big run. You know, these are the type of plays that we need. You, going back on defense here quickly, you hold them to 3 of 15 on third downs, and you thought that was going to be a key going into the game. Yeah, they, they won based upon their, their ability was third down, and their ability was, you know, they scored touchdowns in the red zone. So to hold them to 3 of 15, to, to hold them to four times inside the 25, nine points, that, that's what changed the game. And a beautiful play right here. Yeah, it was great to see the, you know, the young receivers. This is one of those plays that, to me, can change everything for your offense. When people realize the speed we have outside, to get Malachi loose, to, to be able to run the uh, option pass. Uh, that, that should open up a lot of things moving forward. And here's a play that you mentioned in the open as well, where Malcolm doesn't give up on the play and saves you four points. Really proud of Malcolm. He you know, goes in the game, he plays safety all week. He has to go give us some reps at corner, um, gets the ball down, and the guys come out. And you know, th This is what we want. These are all four-point plays. You used the term earlier. That's a term we use for the guys. Uh, you know, they're a big difference between 21 and 9, and that's, that's what we get, were able to do, hold them to 9. So you get them to kick the field goal, so it's a 17-9 game at this point, which would be the final score. You know, probably at this point you would love a four or five minute drive just to milk some clock out of this thing. Yeah, yet, uh, you know, as you point, just not good enough down the stretch. You know, we'd like to be able to run the football and make some plays, and we didn't. And then the sack man 
James Williams, you pull off the scout team, and he makes some big plays for you in the fourth quarter. Yeah, James, excellent young prospect. Uh, been, been doing a really good job on the scout team. Uh, excellent pass rusher, and he got his opportunity. Uh, you know, he's, he'll, he'll continue his redshirt year. We'll use him in some games. Uh, I think there's a lot of young freshman players that, that can help us. It's one name that we've not heard much about, but he made an impact on this game. You get a couple more sacks here late in the game, end up with 13 tackles for a loss. And just a solid defensive effort, keeping a Big Ten team out of the end zone is really impressive. And now you've won four out of five with a 17-9 win. Yeah, you know, every week's its own battle. Um, proud of the guys. You know, I thought they played together. You know, even offensively, while it wasn't perfect, um, those first two drives to not turn the ball over the rest of the game. Um, when you're playing defense the way we were playing, you know, the key is just to, to if you have to punt, punt. Uh, find a way to run the football and, and let the defense go eat. Four and three, Huskers record after the victory over Northwestern. We've got more of the show coming up next. We're back on the Husker football show. Time for this week's Cornhusker conversation presented by teammates. This week, Jessica Cootie sits down with wide receiver Billy Kemp. When Billy Kemp began his search for the landing spot for his final year playing college football, he didn't know much about Nebraska. But what he did know is the belief he had in a plan and the trust he built in his relationships. I think that was the biggest thing, you know, coming into uh, somewhere with great coaching and understands where I want to go and has a plan for me and the team and uh, knows what it takes to get to that next level. You know, there's no place like Nebraska. So, you know, when I came here, it was just a whole different world to me. He also knew for his final season, he wanted to wear a specific number, but he'd have to earn it. I wanted to wear number one for my friend Lavelle Davis. I think that's just what made it so special is, you know, I set, set out for that goal before I went anywhere. Once it happened, like, to wear number one, uh, you know, I decided in Nebraska and found out you have to earn the number. So, like, I don't know, I think at the end when I earned the number, it just kind of made it all more special knowing that, you know, I set that out for myself. And then uh, just looking through all the work that it took to end up to accomplishing it, um, you know, grateful. A lot of prayer went into it, a lot of hard work, so just relief, happiness, a whole bunch of emotions. It was a great, great feeling. I think he was smiling up there for me, so just, just happy to, you know, make him proud. Lavelle Davis Jr., Devin Chandler, and Deshaun Perry were the three Virginia football players who were shot and killed on an on-campus shooting last November. Chandler and Davis were both fellow wide receivers that had become more than just teammates to Billy. Devin wore 15, so during the process of trying to earn a number, I wore 15 here uh, to honor Devin. You know, I just wanted to do something for both of them. I know Lavelle really wanted to wear number one his junior year because his sophomore year he tore his ACL in spring ball. So, you know, just watching him go through that process, work, and then earn his number, you know, it was inspirational to me, even though I was older. You know, when they first got to school with me, I just felt like I was kind of older in the room already. You know, I just felt like I had a lot to do with helping them along, you know, helping them within the playbook, extra routes, catches, you know, whatever it may be. So uh, they had a big impact on my life, whether they knew it or not. And, you know, I just wanted to, you know, just keep their legacy alive and let them live through me. While he may not have before, he now knows what it means to put on that Nebraska jersey. He knows the significance of wearing that single digit for the Cornhuskers. And for Billy Kemp, as he runs onto a football field in that number one, he also hopes to honor a former teammate and brother who no longer can. Man, everything he should have been, could have been, you know, just want to play the, the game how he would want it to be played the hardest. Never want to leave anything out on the field. Just I see it every every day when I put it on my chest. It's close to my heart. So just trying to dedicate this to him. Like coach always says, any place you go should be a better place. I feel like that's what they did when they went places. You know, they brought energy, smiles, happiness, just the, the joy of, you know, waking up every day when everybody doesn't get the chance to. You know, it's just something that we take for granted and any day could be your last day. So live every day to the fullest. Billy got nicked up on the game against Northwestern. I think you're anticipating getting him back before the season's over. A good find in the portal. This has been a really valuable addition to the team. Yeah, Billy's, um, Billy's you know, my type of guy. He's competitive. He's tough. 
Um, he loves to play, loves to practice. Uh, we'll certainly miss that part of him. Going into that game, I, I think you know about 70% of the game plan was zeroed around getting him involved. And when he got uh, when he got banged up, that that certainly uh, put a put a dent into what we wanted to do. But you know, he'll come back, and um, 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 you know I just know even if he didn't come back, the impact he's already had on the team, he'll continue to have it on those young receivers, and uh, we'll get him back at some point, and uh, he can help us finish the year outright. And as he told Jessica there, what a terrible situation to go through in Virginia. That was just awful with that. And you're back in Carolina, you probably knew a little bit about that story. Yeah, no doubt. And um, you know even as we went through the process with him. Um, you know, this is a game that I know he loves, and to have uh, have you know the hard memories, tough memories, sad memories uh, surrounding the game. I mean, he'll always, always, obviously always certainly mourn and grieve his friends, but to have him find maybe a little joy again around football. Um, he's been a great teammate, and I'm happy he's here. Back with some final thoughts from the head coach. We'll do that next. Welcome back to the Husker Football Show presented by BMO. Homecoming week here in Lincoln. The Huskers will entertain the Purdue Boilermakers. First year head coach Ryan Walters. They don't have a sparkling record. They played a really tough schedule at this point in time. What are your thoughts about this matchup on Saturday? Yeah, I think though they're, they're a team that, that's, that's uh, found some momentum. You know, they blew out Illinois, uh, then had to go play Ohio State. Um, you know, Hudson Card's an excellent quarterback, played him at Texas. I've known him since he was in high school, great athlete. Uh, they have they have an explosive offense. They can they can run the football. Um, you know, Burks is an outstanding wide receiver, NFL prospect. So they're they're going to give us a ton to deal with uh, their offense. And then defensively, um, they they get after you. It's the same defense as Illinois. You know, Coach Walter be, being at Illinois last year, uh, they're going to play man. They're going to pressure us and blitz us. Uh, they're going to overload the front. They've got great edge rushers. Um, this is this is an even matchup. It's going to be a battle and. Uh, We'll have to we'll have to not put the ball on the ground. You know we're going to have to win the turnover battle. Uh, we're going to have to play great on special teams. We're going to have to handle the elements on what may be a, a cold, windy day. Um, but this will be a, a true Big Ten football game. Have a good week. Good luck. Thank you. Huskers and Boilermakers will be back next week to check out the action from that game. My thanks to the entire Husker Vision crew and to you for watching. We'll see you again here next week.